Hello, and welcome to episode 3 of Poseidon God of Water 20 Storytime, Hans Christian Andersen, Classic Fairy Tales. It's now time to read the third story of the book, The Storks. So, on the roof of the last house in, in a little village was a stork's nest. A mother stork sat in it, and four young ones were stretching forth their little heads with the pointed black beaks, which had not yet turned red like those of the old birds. At a little distance, the father stork stood upright and almost immovable on the ridge of the roof. He had drawn up one leg in order not to be quite idle while he was watching <coughs> over his nest like a sentry. He stood so still that one might have thought he was carved in wood. Surely it must look very important to my wife. That it must look very important that my wife has a sentry before her nest, he thought. Nobody knows that I am her husband. Perhaps will think that I am commanded to stand here. That looks so distinguished. And he continued to stand on one leg. A crowd of children were playing below in the street. <coughs> no sooner had they noticed the storks than one of the pluckiest boys began to sing an old ditty to tease them. So all his play soon all his playmates joined in, but they only repeated what he remembered of it. Fly away, stork, fly away, stand on one leg all day. While your dear wife in the nest gently rocks her babes to rest. The first little stork they will hang, the second will fry by fire. The third will be shot with a bang, the fourth will roast for the squire. On the roof of the last house in a little village was a stork's nest. Okay. I sang that bit, I don't know why, but Do you hear those boys what do you hear what those boys are singing? said the young storks. They say we should be hanged and roasted. Never mind what they say, replied the mother stork. If you do not listen to them, they can do you no harm. The boys went on singing and pointed at the storks with their fingers. Only one of them, named Peter, said that it was wrong of them to tease the birds and did not join them. The mother stork comforted her children. You must not pay attention to them. Look like your fa look at your father how quietly he stands there on the on one leg. Oh, we are so frightened, said the young ones. And then they hid their heads in the nest. On the following day, when the children came out to play and saw the storks, they sang again. The third will be shot with a bang. The fourth be the fourth will be roast for the squire. Shall we really be hanged and roasted? asked the young storks. Certainly not, said the mother. You will learn how to fly. I shall teach you myself. Then we shall fly into the meadows and go to see the frogs, who will bow to us in the water and cry, croak, croak. And then we shall eat them up. That will be delightful. And then, asked the young ones, then, continued the mother stork, all the storks of this country will come together in the great autumn manoeuvre and will be gone through every stalk must be able to fly well for that is of great importance all those who cannot fly 
the general kills with his beak. Therefore you must take great pains to learn it well when the drilling begins. When then we shall be stabbed after all those, um, after all as the boys sing, listen as they sing it again, as they are singing it again. <coughs> Only listen to me and not to them, said the mother stork. After the great autumn manoeuvre, we shall fly away from here to warmer countries, far away over mountains and woods. We shall fly to Egypt, where you shall <coughs> see three-cornered stone houses, the pointed tops of which almost touch the clouds. People call them pyramids, and they are much older <coughs> than a stork can imagine. There is a river in that country which rises every year over, the, over its banks, covering the whole land with mud. We shall walk about in the mud and eat frogs. Oh, how charming, cried the young ones. Yes, indeed, that country is very pleasant. We shall do nothing there but eat all day long. And <clears throat> while we shall be so comfortable there, they will not have a single leaf on the trees in this country, and it will be so cold that the clouds will freeze and fall down on the ground in little, right, in little white rags. She meant, of course, the snow, but she could not otherwise explain it. Will the naughty boys also freeze to pieces? asked the young ones. No, answered the mother, they will not freeze to pieces, but they will not be very far from it. They will have to stay all day long indoors in the gloomy room, whereas you will fly about in the foreign lands where the warm sun shines and many flowers are blooming. After some time, the young ones had grown so tall that they could stand upright in the nest and look about into the neighbourhood. The father stork returned every day with frogs and little snakes and all sorts of stork dainties, which he had picked up. Oh, it was so funny to see him perform tricks for their amusement. He used to place his head quite back on his tail and clatter with his beak, as if it had been a rattle. And then he used to tell them stories about the marshland. <clears throat> Come along, the mother stork said what the mother yet yeah, the stork mother said one day. Now you must learn to fly. The four young storks had to come out of the nest and onto the ridge of the roof. At first they tottered about a good deal, and also they balanced themselves on their wings, and with their wings they nearly fell down. You only have to look at me, said the mother. You must hold your heads like this and place your feet thus one, two, one, two. That's right, that is what will enable you to get on in the world. Then she flew a short distance away from them, and the young ones made a little jump, but they fell down with a thud, for their bodies were still too heavy. I do not wish to fly, said one of the young ones, and crept back into the nest. I do not care to go to warm countries. You must learn to fly. Okay, that's actually an annotation. Would you prefer to freeze to death here in the winter come when the winter comes? Or shall the boys come and hang out and roast you? I will call them. Oh no no dear mother, said the young stork, hopping out onto hopping out on the roof again to the others. On the third day they could already fly a little, and now they thought they would be able to soar in the air like their parents. They tried to do so, 
but they tumbled down and had quickly to move their wings again. The boys in the street began to sing again. Fly away, stork, fly away. Stand on one leg, stand not on one leg all day. Shall we fly down and pick their eyes out? asked the young storks. No, said the mother. Do not mind them. Only listen to me. That is far more important. One, two, three. Now we turn to the right. One, two, three. To the left. Now round the chimney top. That is very good indeed. The last clap of the wings was so correctly and well done that I should let you come tomorrow with me into the marshes. There you will see several respectable storks and that with their families. You must let them see that my children are the prettiest and best behaved. You must proudly stride about. That will look well. And by this you will gain respect. But shall we not punish those wicked boys? Asked the young storks. Let them cry as much as they like. You will rise high into the clouds and fly away to the country with the, of the pyramids. While they are freezing and have not a single green leaf nor a sweet apple. We shall take our revenge upon them, whispered the little ones, and went on practising. Of all the boys in the street, none was more bent upon singing the song than the one who had first started it, and he was quite a mite and not more than six years old. The young storks thought he was more than a hundred years old, because he was so much taller than their father and mother. And what did they know about the age of children and grown-up people? They made up their minds to take their revenge upon this boy, because he was the first to sing the song, and was never tired of going on with it. The young storks were very angry with him, and the older they became, the less they would suffer it. At last a mother had to give them the promise that they should be revenged, but not until the day before their departure. We must first see how you will behave at the great manoeuvre. If you do badly, so that the general has to thrust his beak through you, the boys will be right, at least in a way, but let us be. You shall see, said the young ones, and took still greater pains. They practised every day, and soon they could fly so well that it was a pleasure to see them. Autumn came at last, all the storks began to assemble, and to set out for the warm countries to pass the winter. That was a great, that was a great manoeuvre. That, that was a great manoeuvre. They had to fly over the woods and villages, only to see what they could do, for their journey was a very long one. They acquitted themselves so well that they passed a review, <coughs> the review excellently and received frogs and snakes as a reward. That was the best certificate that they could eat the frogs and the snakes, which was better still. Now we shall take our revenge, they said. Certainly, cried the mother stork. I have already th thought of the best way. <clears throat> I know where there is a pond. I know where the pond is, in which all the little children are lying until the storks come and take them to their parents. The pretty little babies sleep there and dream so sweetly, much more sweetly than they will dream ever. After 
All the parents wish for such a little child, and the children wish for a brother or a sister. Now we shall go to the pond and fetch one for every child who has not sung that wicked song to tease the storks. But what shall we do to the bad boy who began the sing, to sing the song? In the pond lies a dead baby that has dreamed itself to death, that we will take to him. Then he will cry because we have brought him a dead little brother. But the good boy, I hope you have not forgotten him, who said that it was wrong to tease animals, we shall bring him a brother as well as a sister. And as this boy's name was Peter, <coughs> you shall all henceforth be called Peter. And so it was done, and all the storks are called Peter to the present day. Okay, that was the story of the storks. Join me in the next episode as I read The Daisy. Until then. <clears throat> Don't tease animals. It's wrong. <laughs>